And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. Thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. And we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. Very, very uh, powerful passage of Scripture for us. And so what I want to do right now is, Bear with me. Okay. So what I, I want I want us to do here is can, can everyone see the screen now? The text? Everyone can see that? It's the full. It has a purple top. Okay. All right, great. All right. So what I want us to do is we're gonna just set aside verses eleven and twelve and we're just going to work through verses thirteen because I'm gonna be very honest with you. When I, when I first looked at this, I was like, Pastor Noel gave me the hard one. <laughs> no, it was because it's so deep. And I was, it, was, it, was very, it was very challenging. Um, it was very challenging as I, as I worked through it. And so I just want us to go slowly through each verse, beginning in verse 14. Uh, verse 13, and just really trying to draw significances. I'll ask some questions. We'll go to one, one or two other passages of Scripture, and then we're going to come back and look at the relationship here. But the more I studied this passage, the more I really was just encouraged myself. I was really encouraged myself, and I was really um, uh, just, just challenged uh, in my own faith. So let's just let's just look here. I have some questions here for you, and uh, if everyone could just mute their mic, and then when you want to make a comment, just unmute it, and you can just say it, okay? Um, so verse thirteen. I'll just read it again, and then we can. I'll, I'll have some questions, or you can make an observation or a question. Um, verse thirteen. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. So just right off the bat, any observations, any questions, anything really comes to mind? It seems that uh, there was no one else there. There was no one else there. Oh, that is oh. in verse 13? Yeah, yeah. He had no one greater by whom. So, so, so you're emphasizing this, uh, this idea of, of no one is greater, right? Yeah, no one is equal or, yeah, no one greater by whom he can swear with. Good. Which is, which is significant because the implication being that God is the most powerful one. The implication is the power yeah. of God, right? There's no one above, there's no one above God, right? There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, great, great, great. So. But I guess the question is, why does it say he swore by himself? Because isn't he speaking to Abraham? Abraham? Yeah. I know, it's really confusing. Okay, so that's a question. So that's a question. Maybe we can ask. Uh, 
or does that mean he swore basically like to himself? It's something. I'm just trying to understand the context. Usually, when we swear, I swear to God, kind of like that. We we swear to someone higher than Correct. us. Correct. You know. And so, and so what, what's the purpose? Uh, what's the purpose for when we swear to someone above us? What's the purpose behind that, Pastor? It's it's like really that, that is uh, God. That's your the the, the person you swear to is your witness. It's like okay. uh yeah, it's like an unbreakable or a real commitment you're trying to commit to. You know. That means you have faith on that person. You you believe in this person or well, yeah. you have a high regard to this person. Okay, so but 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 if, so for example, the, for example, let's 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 take a step back though. So what 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 Pastor said was, when you swear on someone above to someone else, the question is what's what is the what is the why do you do that? So so Pastor said there's number one there's a witness, right? There's a witness involved that kind yeah. of keeps you to, keeps you to your word, Diva. Yeah, you're you're. You're held accountable. So this is for accountability. And and, and, and what else? If, if if for example, I say I'm gonna now I'm just I'm using this as an example. I'm not being pejorative or anything. But if I say I swear on my mother's grave that I will do this, what am I trying to emphasize? What am I trying? What am I trying to give to the person who I'm swearing? Your commitment. Yeah. Commitment. What? It's like you're pledging something. Certainty, right? I'm trying to give certainty. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you see that? I mean, I want you to have certainty that I'm going to come through with what I do. Okay. So let's come back to that because, because we see that later in the text. But that's a great observation and a great question uh, that we want to explore further. Uh, what about, what about, what are the actions here? What, what are the actions here? Promise. Ah, good. So there is, there is one action here made, and then the, uh, the object is the promise. Good job, Ati Joy. There's one more. There's one more action here. What's the other action? Beth? He's swore. Swore. Yes. swore. And then the, 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 the means by which he swears, which Luigi brought up, and also Pastor Noel, was uh, himself, right? Mm -hmm. So he makes a promise, and he also swears by himself, okay? Who, who, is, the, who is the promise? Who is the recipient of the promise? Abraham. Uh, Abraham, right? Everyone sees that? Yep. We could say a uh, recipient. Now this is going to be significant because there's certainty here in this promise that's given to Abraham. And of course we could say, well, what's the benefit for us? This is a promise to Abraham. How does it apply to us? Okay. So I want us to just hold that thought, but just, I want us to be thinking about, if we were in some way connected to Abraham, this is huge for us. If God has made any promises to us, this is huge. Or if we're in some way connected to this promise, this is huge. Correct, Diva? Well, aren't, aren't, we, aren't we indirectly um, connected? Because we're, we're, we're descendants in a way, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, no, you're thinking the right thought. Okay, so let's, let's, let's come back to that. Uh, and you're on the right track. Let's continue to work through. Let's unpack this this example here, and then let's come back to that, Luigi. So I want you to I want you to ask that. Let's discuss that later. Okay. All right. Um, but but we're thinking in the right direction. Okay. Uh, any other comments? We can go on to verse 14, unless someone else wants to make uh, to make a comment or a ask a question. Is anything else comes to mind? Okay, 
I, I think we have it there. I, I, I do want to make one. I do want to make one more comment here. If if we can look at this word here for that word for really connects back up to the previous context. So we're gonna we're gonna put that on hold again, and we're gonna come back. But we see a direct connection with the previous context that we have to really. The, the two are in some type of relationship. So to understand verses 11 and 12, we also have to look at verses 13 and 20. If, if we want to look at verse 13 and 20 in its full context, we have to consider verse 11 and 12. So let's continue on here. Saying, so this is going to be the, uh, the statement. So this is the statement. What, what does he say? Someone want to just read it? Surely I will bless you and multiply you. Okay, so. That is promise. Okay, yes, okay, so great, excellent job. So this is the, the, the content of the promise, right? Content of the promise is right here. Now, is there, is there more context to this? Where would we go to, to really understand what's being stated here? What do you mean? <clears throat> so he, he, he's, he's citing what God said, but my question is, is there any other place in the Bible where this is, this is uh, presented? Genesis. Yeah, okay, Genesis. Great, great job, Paulo. And we, we just... Last year, you worked through Genesis, correct? We, we preached through Genesis last year and the previous year, um, uh, maybe 2018 into 2019. Let's, let's go now. To, um, I'm using Step Bible because with our students here, I'm also using Step Bible, and, and I think it's a great tool to help us explore this. So if, if, I, if you were to use Step Bible, and I want to find uh, a lot of Bibles will have in the margin where this is cited. But I could just come here, and I'm looking. You see that verse? D, I'm, I'm going to verse D. I mean, uh, letter D. You see on the left that it's we're citing Genesis 22:17. Okay, so I'm just going to go now. You search in Genesis 22:11 uh, and 19. I've already searched that for us, and I I have it on the screen here. So this this here is a citation from Genesis 22 verse 17. I'm just going to read it, and you can just listen along as I read it. Um, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went to the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said until this day, the mount of the Lord shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself. I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heavens and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because you've obeyed my voice, so Abraham returned to his young man and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham lived at Beersheba. Wow. <laughs> so powerful. I, I do want to, I just want to make one side note. I just saw it, and, and, and I just have to make the comment. Uh, it's so interesting. We talked about how these would be connected to us. Uh, it's so interesting that it says that your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And Jesus says that, the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of heaven in, in Matthew 16. I, to me, that's so interesting because Jesus is the, the Messiah and he declares he's declared to be the son of God there by Peter. It just seems very, <laughs> there's a connection there with Jesus is the offspring of, 
of, of Abraham. And the promise here is that his offspring will possess the gate of his enemy. <laughs> Death and hell is the enemy of Jesus. That's just a side. I just, I just noticed that. Um, but what I want to focus on is this idea of by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord. And then he quotes the promise, right? Uh, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring. Okay? So this is the promise. This is the Abrahamic, this is the Abrahamic covenant, correct? Let, let's go back to the, let's, let's make some identification here. Um, uh, uh, this, is, this then is, everyone can see the screen, correct? So this is a reference to the Abrahamic covenant. And, and Luigi was going in the right direction. <laughs> Are we a part of the Abrahamic covenant? Yes. Yes, we are by faith, Galatians 3, we are by faith children of Abraham. Correct? So, so we are directly connected to this covenant. Okay? So this, this has bearing for us. This has incredible bearing for us. Okay? Now coming back here, uh, you have the content uh, of, this, of this promise. And if we, if we see here, we have this, this emphasis, this surely. Everyone sees that? Uh, surely. Um, number one. And then number two, we have by himself, right? By himself, we read that. I swear by myself that I will do this. Any thoughts or comments? Okay, if there's, let, let, let's continue on. Verse, how is verse 15 related to verse, four, uh, to verse 14 and 13? Are you asking for a specific Abraham. word or the context? So the common thing is Abraham. Okay. For one. Yeah. Okay, so, so, yeah. <laughs> Word, context, and word. There, there's several. There's several answers there. So, so, so Abraham. Ati Joy said Abraham, right? There's a. It's it's, it's a. Abraham is a connection. What, what about the word? Where were you going with that word, Paulo? The word. The thus. Ah. Good. What, what's the relationship, do you think, Paulo? What, what type of relationship here? So there is a uh, causal um, relationship? A causal? Cause or, okay, yeah, so effect. you could, looking back, there's a causal relationship, or looking forward, we could say like an inference, or uh, so, so, so looking back, you could say uh, a causal, right? Looking forward, we could say like a, like an, this would be the 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 effect or effect. result. Mm -hmm. Looking forward, because of this, then this is what happened. Now, I want to really focus on this word here. This word is very interesting to me here. Okay, now I I let's see if I can do it in this step Bible here. If we come back here, let me look to see if they have the word. Let's go back here. Uh, okay, everyone can see at the bottom of the page. Can everyone see at the bottom of the page? It's a little small. If you can't see it, thus. yeah, it's it's thus. But when you look at how it's, it's defined, matter. look at how it's defined. Thus or in this way. Everyone see it this way? Yeah. Yeah. So, Likewise. <laughs> yeah. So the, coming back here, if we're going to further clarify this, the, the effect or the result also gives us the, the manner where we could say in 
this way. In this way. In this way, Abraham received the promise. Now, what is the way? Uh, what, what, are, what are the, let's work through the action again. Let's, let's do the, the verbs. What, what's the action here? What are the actions? Waited. Ah, thank obtained. you. And obtained. Now, how is the, how are, are there any words that describe how the actions occurred? Patiently. Yeah, patiently. <laughs> patiently, right? So in yeah. receiving, receiving the promise, in, in Abraham receiving the promise, in Abraham receiving the promise, what did he have to do? What were the things he had to do? He has to wait patiently. He, <laughs> waiting? He has to believe. What was that? He has to believe. Yes, yes, yes. So, 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 um, uh, excellent. Uh, um, behind this is faith or uh, belief. Excellent observation, Pastor. Absolutely. And we're going to see that. We're going to see the two go hand in hand. We're going to see that. We're going to see that in a moment, okay? But when, when we're waiting for the promises of God, how hard is it to wait patiently? How oh, hard? that's so hard. That's hard. It's hard. Because you want it right away. Yes. It's you so hard. You want for us all to the instant gratification. You want, you want the answer right now so you can do it. You want to have the answer. You want to have the answer. So, so let's talk about this. Number one is uh, it, the difficulty, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, we want the answer. What else? What we, else? Wait, what else happens? We doubt. Yes. We doubt because sometimes there are things that seem to contradict the promise, right? Along the way. Yes. So we yes. tend yes. to doubt. Did Abraham doubt? <laughs> <laughs> he did doubt at one time time remember he said how can i be the father of many nations when i don't even have a child a son yeah and then he didn't wait patiently how did, yeah so so he he doubted he questioned god at, at times uh he, he doubted he questioned he said eliezer let eliezer let, let it be through eliezer right uh so we have we have we want the answer now we 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 doubt and then what's the and third we, thing? What often happens? We, 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 we do other here. things. We try to do it. I mean, we like alternatives. I mean, <laughs> we have to have, we, well, sometimes when we pray or we ask for something and it, you, because you are so impatient and you want the answer right now. So you know what? I will do what I think it would be better yes. for me on what I am doing. We make the decision on we our try own. Try to be God. We, we, yes, <laughs> we 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 try to to uh to make a solution or find a solution on our own. That yes. means you want to be forgetting that God is in control. We do yes. what's right in our own eyes. Yeah, we do what's right in our own. We we try to find our own solution. We do what's right in our own eyes. Our own, our own solution. Way. What our was? Own way. Yeah. What was Abraham's own solution? Tell me what Abraham's own solution was. <laughs> He Many had children things. again with other uh, wives or other. <laughs> actually, actually. That was not the solution, though. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't Isn't it Sarah, Sarah that told him to do, to do it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He listened well, to his wife. following it. Sarah <laughs> forced him. <laughs> actually, it's not Abraham's solution. <laughs> to Sarah's. It's he the wife's solution. He, yeah, enjoy it was he, he enjoyed it. 
<laughs> I just realized. Yeah, I'm it's uh, Adam. yeah, you know, because uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, a matter of husband and wife relationship. Usually, that the wife's always uh, the one who's uh, see, wow, well, Beth, just Beth, Beth. <laughs> But re so, regard regardless, so Sarah, I, Sarah, I came up with a solution. <laughs> uh, Abraham yeah, embraced are. it. Abraham embraced it. <laughs> but, Abraham wasn't being a leader like he should be, so really, it was his fault, not his wife. But 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 <laughs> no, yeah. he is weak. I think Abraham is is just weak. Like he's a normal person, you know. It's he's a human being. He can be weak. I think. Um, the the pushing of Sarah to sleep with this, you know, with the slave or his yeah. maid, uh, uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, the temptation is there, and he said, okay, well, maybe this is what I should do, yeah. because for their age way back then, you know, it's really impossible. Yeah. So his faith <laughs> is kind of just like what Ati Joy said. There's always doubt. When is yeah. this gonna be happening? I'm too old for this. Maybe this is the maybe maybe my my wife is right because at, at, you know it is his wife anyway. Yeah. Maybe by the time he's thinking, well, if my wife is okay with it, so I'm gay. The wife is I'm always gay. correct. Yes. <laughs> he definitely showed endurance. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we're we're we're, go we're going down the path of. I want everyone to sleep in the same room again, but uh, <laughs> no, but, but the, the big takeaway, I mean, whoever's idea it was, they were both culpable. I mean, they were both engaged. They both experienced yeah. the, the, the consequences, but, but both of them had doubt. Both, both of them had doubt. And um, at the same time, so, so what we, so this is an assurance and this is also a, a call to us. Okay. It's assurance in that Abraham, obtain the promise okay it was not a, a perfect he was not perfect okay he sinned he had to confess his sin he had to confess his wrongdoing but at the same time uh it wasn't perfect but he patiently waited as a whole when you look at all of abraham's life think about in 20 years i think it was like a, it was was it 10 to 20 years i, I don't i don't know this, but it was a very long time before he received the promise and so in that time period there was doubt, there was sin, but he was faithful. And it's as the, the, the verse describes, as a whole, he patiently waited. Okay? So this should be an assurance to us, meaning God is not demanding perfection from us because he recognizes that we are flesh, that we are, that we are, we are but uh, a vapor, okay? At the same time, he calls us to patiently uh, wait, all right? Now, we're going to come back because right now we're just seeing Abraham. We're seeing Abraham's example. We have the, the idea of the Abrahamic covenant. And so we're really thinking, okay, this is applying to us as well. But we don't see it yet in the text. So let's go on to – for any questions or comments, or we're going to go into verse 16. That's making sense so far? Yeah, we're good. Good. Okay. Let's go on to verse 16, okay? Verse 16. Now what, what's going to happen is – the author is going to transition into explaining the question that Luigi and uh, and also uh, what Luigi and also Pastor asked about. No one greater than himself. Uh, why would he swear by himself? Okay. So so we have here, and we know that because we have this word for, and th this this for is going to. Uh, explain. It's going to explain. It's going to explain why this all makes sense. Why God swore upon himself. Okay. So then what does he say? Here it goes. So we were asking the question and we, and we gave some answers, but at the same time, it was like, the answer is right here. For people swear by something greater than themselves. And in all their disputes, an oath is final for confirmation. Okay, so this is what we do, right? Uh, if we're having a dispute or we're having a negotiation, right, and we're trying to get to a place, okay, we will swear on someone, something above ourselves in order to 
give certainty that what I say I'm going to do, I will do. Okay? That's what we do. Um, and when it's done, it's final, right? So, so, uh, We swear by something greater than ourselves. Sometimes people say, I swear on my mother's grave I would do this. Or we want, we want someone to make sure someone's telling the truth, right? We say, we say uh, uh, here, right? You get a Bible. Put your hand on the Bible, right? In, in a court of law, put your hand on Swear by the Bible that what your testimony is going to be the truth, right? Very so help you people, God. Go ahead, Luigi. No, I was going to say, you end, they ended off by saying, so help you God, right? Yes. So, so in the court of law, to, to, to give assurance of the court, now maybe in today's context, people are no longer, <laughs> no longer afraid of God or the Bible, but the whole purpose behind putting your hand on the Bible or in the oath of office, someone putting their hand on the Bible and then swearing, so help you God, as Luigi pointed out, it's, it's to emphasize that the person is going to do what, or they're going to say the truth they're going to do what um they're called to do okay so this is this is what we do in swearing in, in, in uh um this is to emphasize this is to emphasize certainty here and once you make the oath it's final Right? It's done. Once you make that oath, it's final. The NIB says, puts an end to all argument. Yes. Once you, you, once you make that, that, that commitment, both the one party that wants the commitment gets it, right? It's done. Okay. So, so this is this is in this here is in a uh, human context this is a human context okay does god need to swear to make sure that we know that his word is going to come true does he need to swear no no <laughs> he doesn't but in working with fallen humanity, he does it for whose benefit? For Abraham, for the people, for human to understand. So, so in human context, we swear to assure that what we say is going to happen. God doesn't mm -hmm. need to do it, but he does it for our benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we people, we human, will know that he, he will do it that he will do what he promised because um nobody nobody is higher than him that that can do anything but him so when he said he'll do it he'll do it if god right. said it, it 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 will be done it will be done yes great observation ati maritas so god desire to show what is he what is he so this is the this is the this is the action so what is the object here what is the object here i want us to identify the object what is the object here what does god desire to show his unchanging nature that, yeah because he the, yes because he is not gonna change his promise is never gonna be changed because that is, is already his will You know, it's not going to change because that is already his plan. That is his, his uh, will. Yes. So that's why he promised it to you because he, that is your plan. That is his plan for you. He promised me that he's going to do this for me because that is his plan for me. Yeah. So, now, um, yeah, for us to be patiently waiting and trust him and had faith that the promise will be done and it will be done by, as a nature. It's the same thing with Abraham, you know. Yeah. He messed it up. You know, he just gave. But as I said, yeah, God's promise 
is God's will. That is His will. Yeah. It, it, before all, before we became what we are, what what I am, He already had planned for me. Yes, I totally believe that. Okay. So it's not gonna change, no matter how uh, resistance you do or you uh, cannot. You, you mean you? We, sometimes we are. We doubt them and we became impatient. We do find our own solution and we do it. And of course, we mess up because. Yeah. But still, if it is his will, it is his will. And I believe that sometimes it happens that kind of we mess it up because that's how we learn. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's good. Um, so, and I think that, I think that, I think what Atimari test is really emphasizing is that it's not that sometimes God is faithful and sometimes he's not, right? <laughs> that's what you're trying yeah, to say, right? No, right? It's not like that. And, and no. so it, it's not that oh, God oh, is he's, saying, go ahead. I was, uh, to, to, basically, he's trustworthy. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And, and, so, and so the purpose is not that, okay, God has to be like this. It's that he's showing us. The benefit is for us. He's showing us his unchangeable character. So then here, now, in the in verse, in verses, in the previous verses, it was Abraham, right? Is Abraham, who's the object here? Who's the object here? Abraham. Is it Abraham? Heirs of the promise. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. We have a, we have a connection. Okay. The heirs. The hope. Who are the, who, who are the heirs? Who? Jesus. Uh, okay. Us. So, <laughs> it's true. Us. It's the whole. The recipient. It says. Yeah, we are the recipient, but the hope is him. It's God is the hope. Yeah, yeah, but but, Atibartas, just I want us to see this right here. The per, who he's showing this to is not just Abraham. Okay, it's the heirs, the, the heirs of Abraham, the heirs of the promise. Yeah. If we are the heirs of the promise, he is showing it to us. Yeah. Okay. So this is a time, and then this is the guarantee, right? This is the guarantee. He guaranteed it. We don't know. This is the means. So he makes the promise, the guarantee is the oath. Okay? All right? Now, this is where it gets really, uh, um, so that, so this is a purpose here. This is a purpose. So that, now there are two things here, two unchangeable things. Now, what are these unchangeable things? <laughs> Looking at the context, what are the two unchangeable things that he's referring to here? It's not as simple. I went back and forth. I looked. I looked at, at commentaries. Okay, so it's not. Oh, my let, let's just list every possibility. Let's list. What are, the, what are the possibilities for things that don't change in the context? So go ahead, Auntie Joy. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I... I could not see the whole thing. Um, Maybe. So God decided how. It's impossible. Character. No one greater. No one greater. It's old. It's old. Changeable character. Okay. Paul, policy. Okay. So, so someone said oath. Someone said character. Mm hmm Anything else? There's no other. Greater. There's several other options here. You have character. You have oath. What else do you have? No one greater. Okay, so the, the person, the person, right? No one greater. So the person, the person of, of and, and, and these two are connected, but. Promise? Four, promise. What else? Anything else? There's one other possibility here. What the only thing is God. Yeah. What? Okay, how about let's add the fifth would be, the fifth would be, uh, Purpose. Purpose. Okay. Now, 
what 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 when I look at the commentaries, most of them are saying it's oath and promise, because those are the two things that are uh, uh, guaranteed. But that but that but but uh, two unchangeable things. What are they? If we we could we could narrow them. To, I really see here. You you have the person of God. Yeah. Right. And you have his promise. Okay. So I think, I think that it, maybe he's focusing on who God is and also the promise. The promise can't change. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the oath is in connection with, so is everyone tracking here? I think I think all of these are de depending upon how you set these up. They're all connected, right? So 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 character is to the. Let me just let me let me just get a clarification here. Uh, so the, oath, the, the oath is just like the way to. It's like just a means, like you have it there, but that's. But what is unchangeable that is uh, being guaranteed is um, the promise and the fact that he's God. I mean, he's unchangeable. Yeah. So I think I think I think that's yeah. So if you if you can, there's five five or six different things there, but they can be within the two categories. What I'm trying to look at is categories. P purpose is connected to the person of God. Character is connected to the person of God. Person is connected to obviously the person of God. And oath and promise are connected. So, if, you're, if we're going to just pick two, maybe it's person of God and promise. Okay, no. but really all of these are in view, just different components. If that makes sense. What I'm trying to get at is we should not say one at the expense of the other. Okay. Is everyone tracking with me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then the, the comment is, it is impossible uh, wait, wait. for God to um, love. Go ahead, someone had a comment. Um, in, in, in I think Joy. No, no, only Yeah. I, in terms of, I, you know, I, I'd be more comfortable in saying it's the nature of God instead of person of God. Okay, okay. The nature of God, it's his nature. It's an attribute of God. Yeah. Amen. Good. I, I like I like that. I like that. So let's include nature for sure. Let's let's if we want to choose this, that that's fine too. It's in his nature. So it is who he is. Yeah. An attribute it is it's it's who he is. So that that's a good qualification, Carl. Thank you. I like that. It's good. Here we go. So uh the, the time is when God wanted to show more convincingly his character. He guaranteed it with an oath so that, okay, now, now I want, I hope we can see here so that these are, these are um, uh, like qualifications, okay? There are two unchangeable things. It is impossible for God to lie. Okay, these are qualifications before he says, what is the purpose? So what is the purpose? What is the purpose of God desiring to show the, the character, right? The, the, the purpose is that we, we, everyone see that? We, And this just describes we who have fled for refuge. So we are fleeing for refuge, okay? Uh, we, what is the thing that we might have? This is a possession. What is the thing that we might possess? What is it? What? Promise. Okay. But, but it, in this verse here, what 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 is it? What what is what does God want us? To, he he's done this for what reason? He, he's guaranteed it. He wants to show. He wants to show. Um, what is the thing that he wants us to possess? A hope. A okay. hope. That's what God is giving us. Okay. Hope. We're gonna get to hope, but 
what is what is it that what is the what is it that we might possess? What is the object here? Encouragement. Yes, encouragement. Strong. This is what he wants us to have: strong encouragement to do what? To be helpful. Yes, to hold fast, to hold fast to hope. Sorry, I'm, I'm yelling. Sorry. Hold fast to hope. So, Atimari, we were, we were getting there. We were getting there. He wants to encourage I'm being, us. I'm being impatient. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> yes, he is. It's my nature. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> because I know it is all about me anyway. I think she wanted to be this by Busadi already. I always tell you my hope. It's my hope. If not, if I don't have hope in my life, I don't know what I am. And God is my hope. <laughs> so <yeah. laughs> what? Sorry. Let's, yeah, let's re let's reword now this hold fast. What's another word we can use for hold fast to the hope? Hold fast to uh to the hope. To just no, I forgot in the uh, uh, remain faithful or stay faithful. To to stay strong and hold on to it. Do not let it go. Trust. <coughs> we're holding. Right? Yeah, yeah another word is, is is faith. We're clinging to. We're clinging to hope. Yes, we have to cling mm -hmm. on it. Maintaining. So, Yes, to be still. You can talk about maintaining. So, it makes me think that if, like, you were in a situation where you needed help from someone and you were gripping their arm, you're having faith yeah. in them to help you because yes. you're holding on yes. to them so tightly. It is to just like an anchor, an anchor, so you will not go anywhere. So you have to hold on to this, so you will not float. <laughs> you're going ahead again. <laughs> See, Ate Martes is jumping again. What? We are, no, we are but, but, I think she wants you to hurry up and finish. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going. We're going here. So this is setting up the big conclusion. This is setting up the big conclusion where Maritas is going for. So we have this strong encouragement. And then here we have, what else do we have? We have, this is possession number two. We have this as a sure and it's faster. Fast anchor of the soul. And what is that? So, Ativari test, what is that hope? The, the anchor is hope? The, right. The, the anchor is the anchor is the hope here, right? Yes. But the hope, the hope. What is the hope? Hope. Hope is something that you hold, you hold it so tight that knowing that it's going to be there for you, that when you are, you're hoping that if you're, let's say you jump into the building and you have hope that somebody there is going to catch you. Yes. And that's the hope there. And who is it? And, uh, the, you know. Who, who is our hope? Who, who is it? The, the text is telling us who is it? It's Jesus. Yes. So he, the author is telling us to cling fast, to cling to Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. To hold on to it, to hang on it. Amen. Let go. Hold fast to the hope. And what's the hope? The hope is not some abstract. It's the one who has gone into the inner place. Where is... Where, where is this? Where is this? It's the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies, where? It's the inner sanctum of the temple. Where? where? Which temple? Temple of the Lord. In our hearts. In the Old Testament, which temple? Temple where the high priest can uh, behind the curtain can go behind the curtain. Yes, go behind the curtain. 
He Behind goes there the once a year. In Jerusalem? So, yeah. there, so the analogy yeah. is there's a temple in, in, in Jerusalem, but here is, right. here what we're going to see, I'm giving you a foretaste of the rest of Hebrews. It's the heavenly temple, the temple not built with hands. The, the, he, he, he has sprinkled the, eter- the blood of the eternal sacrifice. So, so Jesus hasn't gone into the, the Old Testament temple. He, he hasn't gone behind the curtain in the Old Testament. He's done it in the heavens. <laughs> We're going to see that. But, but, but the, 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 the analogy is the Old Testament. So when, when, when he says, the hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain you're like, where? The Old Testament? And what we're going to see in, in chapters 7, 8, and 9, and 10, it's no, in, in, the, in the heavenly places. There's a heavenly temple. There's a heavenly temple that is a pattern that's reflected down into the Old Testament temple. Okay? Mm-hmm. okay. Yes. But it's Jesus. Is this referring to, in any way, the curtain being torn when Jesus died on the cross? Yes, so, so the, the whole picture is that when Jesus offered the sacrifice, it was symbolic. You, you had the temple curtain ripped because no one, could, no one had gone in there before. No one could go there. Only the whole, the, and it was like, no, now everyone can go. Everyone has direct access because look at this. Uh, um, <laughs> I think I'm going to cry. I don't know. Um, so... You would cry. Uh, no. So, what's so amazing here, everyone? What's so amazing? Only Pastor does that. No one in the Old Testament could go into the holiest of holies. Uh, Jesus goes in the holiest of holies, not on earth, but in heaven, in the presence of God. And now we can go there. Think about that. Uh, I think it's ten or eleven. Uh, let us boldly go to the throne in the holy of holies. Think about that for a second. Amen. That's where Hebrews is going. So it, just think about how powerful that is. Right now, we have this anchor that's there, but then the, the author of Hebrews calls us to come with him before the throne of grace. So think about how, think about how silly it is to go to, a, to go to a saint, to ask the saint to go to the Father. Think about how silly it is to, to ask for someone else, what, what, a media, another mediator. Why would we do that? The whole focus here is on Jesus. He's the forerunner. And he's, he has become the high priest forever. For us. For us. Uh, Okay. Um, I'm sorry I got wound up. Sorry about that. Um, I, I want us to be thinking about this because all of us are going through different trials. We're going through different things. We're going through things where we think about, is it worth it to continue? I'd rather not deal with the problem. I'll just go back to my old way. I'll just, I'll let that problem go behind me. Or how can I continue? We have different trials. Each one of us have different trials. And what the author of Hebrews is calling us to is that there's a promise been given to us. There's a promise been given to us, just like to Abraham. And it's going to be given to us one day. And we we have to wait in faith. It's getting late here. Um, I wanted to go to several passages. I asked you to search for the promises. We don't really have time to go there. <laughs> let, let me just go ahead. Let me just go ahead and uh, read you the, the promise. What example of a promise that's given to us? And then we'll, we'll close on that. Maybe we could always 
we could always look further at the promises next week. Um, someone else could, could pick up on that. Uh, I, I do just want to go to one, to one, um, to, if, if I search, if I search this promise, um, I, I've, I've done a word search of promise. We actually find out that even Abraham, verse uh, Hebrews 11, if you can look at Hebrews 11, verse 13, all these died in faith not having received the things promised, but having greeted them afar off, having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on earth. Okay? Um, so then at the end of Hebrews, there's different promises that are promised. But if we could get it down to, to, to one promise, let me go ahead and just read you this last passage and we'll be done here. Let me just read you one last Sorry. We're almost done here. Hebrews 13. Sorry, Hebrews verse 12. So this is one example of the promise. For you have come... Uh, you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire, a darkness and gloom, and of tempest, the sound of the trumpet, and a voice whose words the hearers beg that no further message be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. Even a beast, when it touches the mountain, could not. It would be stoned. Indeed, so, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come. What is the promise? What have we been given that we have yet to receive? You have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, where innumerable angels gather to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. And then if you continue down here, he says, therefore, verse 28, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Okay. So in short, the promise is heaven. Yes. Yes. And it's coming here. Okay. And everything, everything that heaven entails, everything that heaven entails, an incorruptible Riches, God Himself, Jesus. There, there's many more. If you, if, if we were to really unpack this throughout Hebrews, you'd find other things. A city, the heavenly Jerusalem. But in short, we've been given this eternal kingdom in Matthew, the kingdom of the heavens. Um, that is what we've been promised. That's the, that's the that's the promise of Abraham. Um, in short, and one day. It's going to come here. And that's, what, that's where our hope has to be. Wherever Jesus is, we want to be with him. So he is our hope. Yes. The only way. Amen. And, 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 and this is, this is a, like a, a, a foretaste. As you, we continue to study through Hebrews, we're going to just start to see this really uh, expand, expand. And, 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 uh, you'll see more examples. You'll see different things. Uh, so this is really a transition. If, if This is like the transition, the start of the whole discussion of sacrifice. We've, we've had four tastes before. So, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll turn the, the Bible study back to, I'm sorry, it's gone a little late. I'll, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor. Right. Um, and we can pray. And um, thank you for your time. And I'm I'm sorry for it going a little long. <laughs> the last time you were no, good. We're good. We're good. good. We're good. Nice to study. That. Thanks, Tim. Nice study. Good study, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. You're welcome, Pastor Tim. We miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Bethany. Don't take that verse, Tim. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say. Uh, uh, I'm just going to share some takeaways here for tonight. Uh, 
I'm just going to read it from verse 25 of chapter 12. Chapter 12 of Hebrew. The, uh, I will read it in New Living Translation, so it's, it's very paraphrased. So it says, Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one, one is, is a big O, who is who's speaking. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all, all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. Verse 28. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. That's a very strong. So when we worship God, it should be with holy fear and awe. Not just uh, regular worship. Amen. Hallelujah.